I had this kind of aha moment that made me realize that my research and my PhD was not just gonna be about improving how humans and machines interact, but ultimately it was about how humans connect with other humans. And, and that really kind of shaped the trajectory of my research. I'm Rana al and I develop technology that can read your emotions through facial expressions. I'm Egyptian, I was born in Cairo, but my parents worked in the Middle East, so I grew up in Kuwait right until the first Gulf War, and then we moved to um, Abu Dhabi. So I studied computer science for my undergraduate degree at the American University in Cairo and applied to a PhD program at Cambridge University. I got my PhD acceptance only a few months before September 11th. My parents were extremely concerned about me leaving. And, and to his credit, my husband at the time, he was the only person who was, he said, you know, go, you gotta do it. You, you got in, go now. And so I packed my stuff literally and just left for England, um, which, which is quite unusual for a young Egyptian Muslim woman. I traveled a lot as a kid, but I had never lived abroad. It, it was lonely. It was lonely a lot of the time. And I, you know, I miss my family. I definitely miss my husband. And all my communications back home, and with my husband in particular, was mediated through technology. So remember ICQ? <laughs> so I, I, we used to do a lot of ICQing, and it was great that I could connect with them and, and stay in touch. But at the same time, it felt like it was very you know, transactional almost. Like, you know, you're, you're sharing information, but you're not really connecting deeply. And I, and I missed that, right? And there was one particular day, my husband jumped on ICQ and um, I was really homesick. I was literally in tears. And I, I didn't, I didn't want to say I was, like I didn't want to type, hey, I'm crying or like I'm really homesick today. And so I didn't say anything. I don't think he realized how upset I was. But that was the moment when I realized that, you know, Technology is cool in it, that it's allowing us to connect with so many people around the world, but the, but the quality of the connection was almost really weak. And I felt like all my emotions were just getting lost in cyberspace. And I wanted to change that. So it's now 2006, and I had just started at MIT Media Lab um, on this NSF-funded project to build wearable glasses for individuals on the autism spectrum. So twice a year, we'd have these sponsor weeks, and it was called Demo or Die. We had to show a working demo of our technology. And so these amazing you know, Fortune 500 companies would come to the lab, spend a week, and they would say, you know, we love the autism work you're doing, but how about putting this in cars? Or maybe, you know, Procter & Gamble would say, we're testing all these new products, can we use your technology? This struck me that we have this opportunity to go from academic research to a chance to change how people do things on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and that, to me, was the tipping point for starting a company. We are spending increasing amounts of time with our devices, and I, I feel like there's an opportunity for these devices to have a more meaningful impact on our lives, like a more meaningful role in our lives, if they, if they knew how we felt. So for example, a, a mood tracking phone that understood how you're feeling, it could help you see patterns that maybe you don't see. So if it matches your mood with your calendar, it can say, you know, that standing meeting you have every Monday, it's not working for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, if your online learning app could sense if you're bored or if you're confused, it can adapt in real time and that would make for more effective learning outcomes. I think there were many times where, 
you know, I, I considered quitting. I think what kept me going um, was this passion, was this deep conviction that I'm onto something that can really change how we connect with each other. And I, I think that passion is this internal like drive and this, I, I don't know, like this gut feeling that you're onto something. I think that that's really important. The advice I would give to, to like that person sitting in that room, I should have just said, guess what? I'm feeling really bad today. I need help. And I, and I didn't, and I, you know, I think I should have. <laughs> I guess in a way I ended up developing technology that would have let me know that I could have just shared this emotion. It just took many years to get to that point.